coffee. Kathleen Eileen Kathleen. Amongst these three, just one great lifelong love for me. I don't have to climb up onto the kitchen table anymore as when I was four, those mornings in that Brooklyn third floor walk up when my father stirred the first clouds I'd ever espied in a cup, then rushed out to an elevated train, left behind a pale sweet mix, cool enough for any child to savor. Nor am I sidelined anymore to a bedroom, a mere child sent to do my homework while all the stay-at-home mothers in our new Long Island suburb gather of an afternoon for what so soon after the Second World War they delight in calling their coffee clatch. Yet now I need not ditch school to sit for hours in a Southern California coffee shop, sip unlimited refills with my high school friends and order one English muffin, so nobody will suggest that we loiter too long while we definitively debate, delineate the meaning of life. And I never carouse autumn nights in Paris anymore, nor wander wee hours with my college friends through arriving truckloads of flowers and produce at the old La Halle's market, nor linger late with a steaming, cheesy French onion soup, and then hours later over breakfast at the pensione, need the bold bolstering of a bowl-sized cup of java. Now new newsroom vending machines dispense tepid faux coffee into small paper cups to prop my eyes open when a phone call at dawn urgently summons me to a local bombing or a city council drones on into the night and back at the office I still have to find something in it for people to chew over tomorrow morning over coffee. I don't really know Brit Hume anymore either have no obligation to pour Jameson into elegant Irish coffee glasses. His wedding gift when we both worked for a nationally syndicated columnist in Washington, D.C. But at our most recent St. Patrick's Day celebration, nonetheless, we, despite his now dubious Fox News fame, raised one more toast to his name. Gone are those days, too, after my divorce. Lived alone, brewed, freeze-dried for instant gratification, and floated as weightless as a tang-tongued astronaut. For years adrift in the blackness of my cups, with no sugar, no real sweetness. More than a decade gone, like steam off a hot cup, since I first sat alone at Café du Monde after Preservation Hall jazz, delighted in chicory coffee and beignets. And these days I can't stroll into that Starbucks in Fort Collins, Colorado with my father while everyone cheerfully greets him by name and a barista reconfirms his usual order. While I know our remaining days are measured in coffee spoons, I am hazy on the details. How are coffee berries hand-picked, sluiced, pulped, hulled, peeled to bare beans, shipped from the Americas, Asia, or Africa in 132-pound burlap bags, roasted at a hellish 900 degrees for up to 17 minutes, blended, cooled, cleaned, then packed. And what of Ethiopia's ancient goat herds who guarded their flocks by night themselves no doubt wide-eyed and endlessly counting goats, who first noticed on mountain slopes a wild bush with glossy evergreen leaves, the plant their four-legged charges nibbled, then remained agog all night. My wife offered the choice of coffee tea or me, prefers decaf tea, so I am free to select a blend of mild arabicas, 
to please myself. Buy whole beans by the pound for freshness. Keep them in the freezer. Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, even some Sundays, grind them as needed. Select water from a two-and-a-half-gallon container. Then, when my old-school twelve-cup Mr. Coffee drips dark liquid to the line in the glass carafe, I pour. Add fresh local honey, just the right sweetening. Fire up my frother, fraught with whole milk from a local dairy. Pour, stir, savor. Coffee now the world's most popular hot beverage. Despite each sampling, every swallow that leaves us wanting something more. Although coffee remains ever tantalizing in its steam, in the heated ardor of its scent, its wide-eyed waking dream, in the sheer beguilement of an over-promising aroma that stirs remembrance, lures us with a familiar heady air. In each cup, all those currents, clouds and continents, everything still churning.